I'm stunned. I cannot believe you've taken Gerard. Are you f***ing joking right now? <laughs> yes, people. I'm Shrini and you are watching MTAC TV. Of course, I'm joined by my boys Adi and Ritwik in the building. And we're doing what you guys are doing because we are picking our six candidates on behalf of MTAG, of course, for the Premier League Hall of Fame. Wow, that was a lot of words. Finally, I got that out there. Of course, the first two picks are Thierry Henry and Alan Shearer. Adi, I think those picks are deserved. What do you think? Yeah, 100% man. I mean, no one else more fitting to open the Hall of Fame. Thierry Henry, the biggest baller in the Premier League has ever seen. Debatable with Ronaldo, but you know, he's not retired yet. And Shearer, man. Top goal scorer and a Premier League winner as well, so you know, fair play to them. Ritwik, do you want to explain the rules to all our audience? Yeah, so real quick, we sh- we know the 23-man shortlist. Out of that, we further categorize them into defenders, midfielders and forwards. We're going to pick two from each position and on the count of three, we're going to write our candidates on this piece of paper and show it to all of you at the same time. So we have some very exciting stuff. Let's get into it, guys. Okay, guys, first category is defenders. We're going to get straight into it and I'm going to name the candidates for you. It's John Terry, Rio Ferdinand, Ashley Cole, Nemanja Vidic, Sol Campbell, Tony Adams, and because there's one of the keepers to contend with, we have uh, Peter Schmeichel in this list as well. Guys, give me your picks, man. Put your papers up. Let's go. Boom. Boom. Okay. KT, KT, KT. <laughs> Very interesting. But I mean, John Terry is unanimous for all of us. So well done. But uh, you know, Ritwik and I have completely agreed on Rio Ferdinand. Shrini, you've gone for Ashley Cole. What are your reasonings? Don't get me wrong. Like Rio Ferdinand is an absolute goat, but I think Ashley Cole is super underrated. Like, look at it from this point of view. Like Ashley Cole is so goated as a left back. Like the the drop off between like the first position and the second position is huge. Like Patrice Evra is a very good left back, but then again, Ashley Cole totally dominates that position. You know, when you talk about the centre backs, you have JT, you have Sol Campbell, you have, you know, even the likes of Rio Ferdinand. So yeah, man, I think Ashley Cole's way too goated and too underrated to not be in there. Rithwik, convince me about Rio, man. Why should Rio be in there? See, if there was a you know Premier League team of the decade or Premier League team of all time, and we had to choose it position by position, then I'd definitely go for Ashley Cole because he is undoubtedly the best left back in the league since the Premier League has started. But however, I mean, we're talking about defenders. We're not categorizing them into a spe- uh, specific position. And if you consider Rio Ferdinand, man, he's been playing. He's been the goat since he was at Leeds. Then he moved to West Ham. Then over here. Oh, sorry, West Ham. Then Leeds. Then United. And he has been. He was the most expensive transfer at the time. He was the most expensive transfer from Leeds to Man United. He ha- he was the Van Dyke of that era. He changed the way football was played at that time. He was the person who would play with his feet. He was the first defender to do that. And look where the game has now. So he revolutionized the game, and, and there's no way he cannot be there. That's only that's my only argument. Otherwise, yeah, it would have been cold for me too. <laughs> Ali, what do you think, man? I mean, arguments. Um, you know, I, whatever Ritwik said, I completely agree with that. One of the original ball playing centre backs. A lot of people, I'm sure, United fans who are watching this are going to give me a lot of uh, us a lot of stick actually for maybe not picking Vidic. But I don't think Vidic would have been the level he was if he didn't have Ferdinand as a, as a centre back partnership. And again, you know, Ferdinand was one of the original born big centre backs. Like Ritwik said, broke that whatever 30 million transfer fee was for a defender, which just shows how good he was at that age. You know, absolutely monstrous player. Ritwik, tell me one thing: Does Shrini's argument make you maybe think twice about you know taking Cole, or is it Ferdinand 100? And then I'll go to Shrini. I mean, I was a little confused, but then when I was, you know, when I was speaking about Ferdinand, it all came back to me that why I picked him in the first place is because he is he he changed the game, and if you're changing the game, you need to be in the Hall of Fame. Simple as that. She have I, have we changed your mind actually? <laughs> no, like don't get me wrong. I would have gone for Rio for sure. I'm a big fan of Rio, even as a City fan. But I have to say that like Cole's also an invincible, and he has been the greatest left back. Not only in one great side, but even in that Mourinho side, even in that Wenger side. So, and I think he's been the goat like throughout. Like, there's been no competition. I know Evra's competed, but Ashley Cole is super clear of the top. Clear of the top. So yeah, man, Rio Ferdinand's a goat, but I think Ashley Cole's even above him. Adi, go for yeah, it. Can I, just, I mean, I think it's. I think we're probably going to go for Ferdinand. But does anyone want to give a shout out to John Terry? Five Premier League titles, probably the best centre back. In Premier League history, could we yep. say that? Facts. Let's go. Facts. 
Easy. I would go for. Com- I love company, and of course, there's a bias over there. But if I had to take company out of the picture, he's nah. he's clear of Vidish and Ferdinand for me. Definitely is. I mean, well, I mean that's our centre back picks pretty much wrapped up, man. Rio Ferdinand and John Terry, welcome to the M Tag Hall of Fame for now, at least. Let's move on to the next one. Let's go. All right, guys. So we have picked our defenders. In case you missed it. Well, why did you? Because we just started the video. It is, of course, Rio Ferdinand and John Terry. But now we're gonna, now we're gonna pick our midfielders, and there's a lot of options, guys. So bear with me. There's Steven Gerrard, there's Frank Lampard, there's Patrick Vieira, there's Roy Keane, David Beckham. Yes, I know that he's a right finger, but guys, there's so many, so many players. We had to fit a DB somewhere. There's Paul Scholes, of course, and there is Matt Letizia. So, guys, let's put our papers up. Huh? Let's go. Let's show. Let's show it. Right then, all right then. So, Adi, I have to go to you for this one, man. You pick Patrick Vieira, you pick David Beckham. I don't see a certain Steven Gerrard, but I do see an Anfield poster. So, what's going on? He wears Real Madrid, bro. You get get the hint, man. He was wearing Real Madrid on. He wears <laughs> Madrid he wears half and half jerseys, man. He wears half and half jerseys. Adi, explain right now. What's up? Okay, I just want to say that even if, let's say, I didn't pick Vieira or Beckham. Gerard would not be third on my list. It would be Lampard. Now, <laughs> as a local guy. fan, it was, you know, they all look at me like I'm crazy. Yeah, I, I you know I see it. <laughs> I see it with Lampard as well. I'll give you my reasoning for. Well, I mean, I've seen a lot of Vieiras. Vieira, powerhouse in midfield, world class player. There's no debate there. Beckham, yeah. I'll tell you why. Okay, he did a lot for the league, not just in terms of like <laughs> being the player on the pitch, but off it, he was a global superstar. He attracted the eyes of of multiple countries, especially in Asia. David Beckham was a name, the original. He was a brand that came with it, and people forget that you know there's a glitz and glamour Beckham. He's also he's a world class player. The fact that he went to a Galacticos Madrid is not. He didn't go for no reason. He was a, a brilliant, brilliant player. Um, you know, I've seen Ritzik's pick with Lampard. I would probably go. It's between him and Beckham. But Gerard, not for me, man. Doesn't have the league titles. Yes, he carried a team, but come on, man. But know. over the most, over exactly. the best player to play for your club, you're taking these two players over the it's best right. player to play for your club ever. See, it's it's not like Gerard. He it's not like he doesn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. But I think on merit, Lampard and Beckham are. <laughs> st- I'll, I'll put it that way. Shreeni, you know what? I'll go to Ritwik for this one first. Because before I come on to Gerard and you know we have all this controversy, I want to know what you think about Paddy Vieira because that's a unanimous pick. Man, that guy, he, the captain of Invincibles. Okay, he's yeah. the box-to-box midfielder. He's won probably everything there is to win except for the Champions League. He has a World Cup to his name. And everywhere, every time you hear a midfielder's name, you always see them <laughs> comparing him to you know Patrick Vieira. And I've only seen clips of him, but from what I hear, what I read, what I see, I think he was the goat of that midfield position. There, there, people have come, people have gone, but his name has stayed. And yeah, it has to be him. Man. Captain. Can I, just, yeah, yeah. Can I just quickly add that for the people watching this, if you haven't seen Patrick Vieira, go and do yourselves a favor and watch a montage of him. This guy is the original Maclele, Kante, you yeah. name it. I had to it all in one. All in one. <laughs> yeah. Shrini. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean. Guys, I know United fans are absolutely breaking the keyboard because we haven't mentioned Roy Keane. And respect to Roy Keane, he's dominated games in Europe. But I just think that what stood out to all of us is the fact that just footballing ability-wise, Patrick Vieira has just that little more, which is why he stands out to us. But shout out to Roy Keane, an absolute goat. But you know, on this whole Steven Gerrard issue, I can't believe I have to defend him, guys. We are shooting this on the day when Steven Gerrard did slip. So the fact that the City fans are defending him is absolutely mental. But Steven Gerrard, I know he's not a one, he's not won a Premier League, but he is the best English midfielder of all time. He, in my opinion, is the best midfielder in Premier League history. I mean, he can do everything. The way he grabs a game by the scruff of the neck, the fact that he could actually, you know, aside from those Hollywood moments again against West Ham and Olympiacos, the fact that he can actually properly defend as well. Like this is not the era where you know a certain midfielder covers some distance and there's that. Steven Gerrard could actually defend. Steven Gerrard could actually play as a ten. He could play as an eight as well. He could play as a six. He has also played out wide. He's played right back. He's done everything in that. Team 
and he's played in a, in a team that cannot compare to the Chelsea team. And if he went to Chelsea, he'd have medals galore. And you know, you're talking about Lampard. Jose Mourinho wanted Steven Gerrard, so I think that's my Gerrard argument wrapped up. And I think that's that's my point there. But Adi, you want to add something? Yeah, man, those are excellent points, and I completely agree with you. You know, the fact that Chelsea wanted him was Mourinho's golden piece, and he is the best midfielder I think the Premier League has seen. But on merit, he he doesn't make it for me because you know Lampard, Beckham, they have the silverware. They've been in those world class teams. They have they've done it year in year out. There haven't been any dips in form, whatever. Not that Gerard hasn't, but yeah, I think it's these guys for me. Anyway, guys, what are our final picks? What do we do? Look, guys, one of them is. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna. We I'm have gonna veto here. this. I'm gonna veto this, guys. I do not care. I'm vetoing this. You know, and it has to be Paddy Vieira because he's a unanimous pick. And I'm going for Stevie G. I can't believe after this defense, Stevie G, man. We have bloody Fabian Delph sitting right in front of us with the whole Anfield poster, but he's gonna snake them for no reason. So yeah, I don't care. There's no rules. It's Paddy Vieira and it's Stevie G. Frank Lampard, I love you. You're a city legend, but hey, game's the game. Let's go. So guys, we've got our midfielders wrapped up. Shree, I still can't believe that you chose Gerard. You vetoed it, and Adi chose Lampard, and you were choosing Beckham over Gerard. I just, I can't like Liverpool. I don't. Let's move on. Let's move on to our forwards. <laughs> For our nominees, we've got Michael Owen, Ian Wright, Robin Van Persie, Robbie Fowler, Dennis Bergkamp, Les Ferdinand, Andy Cole, Eric Cantona, and Didier Drogba. Wow, those are some names. <laughs> My God. So guys, let's show it. Let's show our papers. Oof, my God! Everyone has different picks. I think this is the first time all of us have two separate, <clears throat> separate picks. Not, not all of us agree on the same person. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to go to you first for this. You've picked, you've picked Didier Drogba. I don't think he's better than RVP. I mean, we have, and you've picked Burkham. Burkham might be better than him, but I seriously don't see why. It's an unpopular opinion. I don't get all these critics of Didier Drogba. What do you want to say about that? Firstly, I think the pick that Adi and I agree on is Dennis Bergkamp. So I'll let Adi touch on that. But speaking of Didier Drogba, I think it's one of those things where a player doesn't play in a league for a lot of years, and people have all these opinions. But if you watch Didier Drogba live, you know everything that he does. I think he is that one striker who changed this whole trend of 4-4-2 and a 4-3-1 was solidified in the Premier League under Jose Mourinho because of Didier Drogba. He was such a sacrificial striker. He could basically do everything by winning, you know, winning the ball in the air, just working so hard for the team, making that space so that the likes of Lampard can make those runs and score those goals. I think he is way beyond the goals. Sure, he's won four Premier League titles. Sure, he has two Golden Boots, but Didier Drogba is so much more than that. He even brought the knuckleball technique into the Premier League. I mean, I know others have done it, but I think he really solidified that as well. So, I think Drogba is a striker who is very selfless, which kind of goes against the position itself. So. Drogba is a, a Premier League goat for me for sure. Even though I prefer RVP as well, statistically, but Drogba is my guy. Adi, what's your thoughts on Drogba and of course uh, DB as well, Dennis Bergkamp? I mean, I personally wouldn't have gone for Drogba. Let's say over Van Persie. I think uh, my picks that were uh, Bergkamp and Cantona. Van Persie would have been third for me. I love him as a player. Yeah. What a left foot, absolutely brilliant striker. Yeah. And uh, you know, two goal moves as well then. But uh, you know, touching on Dennis Bergkamp, what a player. I think the master of flair. We've he was one of the original flair players who came into the league. Who was just so silky smooth. You know, he wasn't one of those the players who who needs <clears throat> pace, power. That that's raw. Everything. It was a touch of class and elegance. That's what he brought to the league. You know, uh, he elevated the likes of Robert Pires and Thierry Henry with him. That's the reason they were the invincibles were there. He's one of the, probably the most slept-on players uh, when people talk about goats in Premier League. And yeah, man, that goal against Newcastle again. If you haven't seen that goal, guys, if you're watching this, do yourself a favor. It is the best goal in Premier League history, arguably. Rithvik, you want to add something? Yeah, I just wanted to say that. I mean, I agree with your picks. Your picks are good, and I just want to justify why I've picked my picks, which are RVP and Cantona. Firstly, I don't think out of all of them, there's a better goal scorer than Robin Van Persie, <clears throat> and the influence he has on any team he joins is the greatest out of all of them. Like he's a, he was so short of being a Harry Kane, what Harry Kane is right now, and he won those titles at the end, which is why he's in this list probably. I don't think Harry Kane will be in the list just because he's not won anything. But coming to Eric Cantona, okay, Adi, you mentioned the impact of Beckham as a name. There has been, the reason we're getting all these foreign players in the Premier League is Eric Cantona. He was the first one. He showed the world 
what foreigners can do in the prem and he completely changed the game he with his collars on he was that brand he was that image and i think and uh, adding on to being a great goal scorer as well which is the first priority for this but how are we going to settle this we got cantona rvp perfect i i, I want to add something united fans you guys must think we're biased but i want to give a big shout out to andy cole i think andy cole is the most underrated player in prem history the guy has scored 187 goals the guy has not even scored a single penalty super super underrated the better part of that york and cole partnership and we can't not mention the premier league and strikers and not mention 442 and andy cole is one of them and you know i just before you actually decide that this week You talked about how RVP has the biggest impact. I disagree with that completely. Didier Drogba is a legend because of his impact. RVP is the best to watch, and he's probably my favorite out of these all of these players. But RVP's window is very short because he was so injured. Drogba's window is very long, and the fact that he's won four Prems, even more than you know someone like Lampard, just shows you that his impact was the best. So that's my take. But Rithik, go on. My, sorry, Adi, you wanted to say something. Go for it. I'm sorry, quickly. You know, I'm listening to Shreeni's arguments about Drogba, and I do. I think I sort of agree with him. He is a cup final specialist. Again, that's not the Premier League, so it shouldn't really come into consideration. But for, he is the man for the occasion. He could rise up when you needed him to. Van Persie, you know, the fact that he had to leave Arsenal to win a title, I don't think it's really his fault. But uh, he's he's great. But Drogba was, I think, a different level when it comes to rising. But you really need them. Let's go. But the Arsenal team he left was completely shambolic. You look at that team. And the Chelsea team, Rogba was in, had all the greats. He, it was in the Abramovich era. So that just, and the United team that RVP joined, when you you saw his impact when he left. What happened to the team? When Sir Alex left, what happened to the team? I mean, I just don't think. Yeah, I mean, I, it's either ways. It's, you can't really debate upon much upon this, and I don't think we should. <laughs> because we need to conclude this. Yeah. So you guys have gone for Burkham. That's common for the both of you. Yeah. Adi and I have gone for Cantona. That's common for the both of us. And I think that should just settle. I think it should be Cantona and Burkham as our forwards. Okay. I'll yeah. Then. Well, guys, thank you so much if you're still here watching. I'm going to quickly sum up the picks for the Hall of Fame chosen by more than the game television. We're very professional. Okay. So in defence, we've got John Terry and Rio Ferdinand. in midfield somehow i don't know how we've got steven gerard with patrick vieira and in in the attack we've got dennis burkham and eric cantona do you guys agree with our picks do you disagree let us know in the comments below who would you choose from the 23 man shortlist let us know shrini guys make sure you listen to shrini very carefully now get us signed off firstly guys i don't know about who you'd pick but adi would definitely pick pick fabian del because he's an absolute snake for that whole gerard thing but of course guys let us know in the comments below and before all of this you've got to subscribe to the channel man you've got to like the videos you've got to press the notification bell because the times that we're going through are very tough you know we're in a black mirror episode and we've got to be together and that's why we're going to drop content for you super regularly so stay tuned for that and of course follow us on ig follow us on twitter follow us on facebook do all of that all day and every day and of course until next time we move